It does not have to be a new year, a new you. It just has to be a healthier you in the new year, you guys. Make sure you check down below in the description box where you can find the links to TLC products, including the IASOT, the Nutriverse, the Life Drops, the Resolution Drops. There are just so many things there to help you in burning fat and staying healthy. There's even the new immune tea, which I'm going to order. So I can't wait to like, you know, try that. And I hope they get the sea moss back. But I do love the sea moss from Men and Ocean. I'm sorry, it's supposed to be a commercial. Yes, okay. Get those TLC products for me. And do not forget that my biggest life change has been through Kiara Lachey, Team Lachey, If You Can Move.com. You guys get cute little outfits from Paige and Amari. You also check out Just Move Supplements because she is helping us with the energy. Okay, this is the energy supplement. Love it. Okay, just got my protein. Gonna get me some after I work out. So yeah, y'all, down below in the description box, support, support, support. So you guys are always asking me where I get my glasses from. So I thought I would finally give y'all a real little ad, okay? Firmo, I can't see, bitch. Okay, I'm just playing. I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. These are my new Firmo glasses here. Super, super cute, right? They are prescription because I'm like totally blind. And I got these matte ones that I think are really dope. And I felt like they would go good with the fact that I no longer have hair. You know what I'm saying? But either way, you guys can use my link and give me credit and get you some glasses from Firmo. Come on in, come on in, come on in, not come on in, not come. Sorry, y'all, y'all know I'm weird, whatever. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. Okay, follow me on Instagram and let's get into the video. And we're back and we're black, y'all. What's going on? Thank you so much. It's Shane for short for the super chat. We appreciate you being here and accounted for. Okay. Hey, everybody. Thank you, moderator. Okay. Moderators. Okay. Whoever comes in too, because I see uh, Saki for sure up in here. Thank y'all so much for joining me again for another Bondi Blue show. Okay. <laughs> we back. We back and we black. Okay, listen, all the time, every day. I'm glad y'all came back, okay? We have a couple of topics to get into. Okay, we do. We have a couple of topics to get into. Um, The first thing that I want to get into, okay, without any further ado, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, okay? So apparently our girl, Chloe, okay, I don't know if y'all have seen Chloe's performance going around social media, but Chloe did a performance of Nina Simone's, um, you know, uh, uh, I don't know why I can't think of the song, a bird's flying high, you know how I feel, that, uh, uh, you know how I feel. Feeling good. That's what it's called. Uh, it's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. Yeah, I've heard that song sung so many different ways. But anyway, Chloe did a performance, okay? And Chloe got up there and gave y'all sexuality okay she gave y'all dance moves okay she was flipping over herself okay she she was moving she was on the floor y'all 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 really be feeling the way when the girls get on the floor and show y'all what they made of especially when they black if a white girl rolls around on the floor nobody says anything she can do the exact same choreography but if the girl got melanin in the ass y'all don't know how to act y'all don't know how to feel okay um, I don't understand why. Well, no, I do understand. Let, let, let me rephrase. I personally feel like it, 
If you can dance, you innately dance a certain way. I don't know many black women that don't utilize their hips in a sway. Like they're a certain, like I'm, I'm gonna do this no matter what. Like this is going to, ha this separation of top from bottom is going to happen, okay? All right, it, it's going, like I just kind of feel like we're always over sexualizing the dance moves that black women do because that's what white people like to do. White people like to over sexualize us. It, it's a way to make themselves feel comfortable with the atrocities. Um, they do a lot of things by demonizing what is innate to us. Body rolls and big asses are <laughs> innate to the black worlds. Okay. And so when white people can't exactly execute something in the same manner as black people, whenever they can't exactly do something the way that we do it, they like to, you know, make it out to seem, you know, nasty. That's too sexual. That's inappropriate. You know, they make everything inappropriate. And that mentality put on black people has now been accepted and divvied out by black people. It's called respectability politics. So anytime somebody takes something that is an art form and transforms it into their form of art, and if their form of art has something to do with body movement and it comes off as sensual or sexual to you, people like to demonize that. People love to demonize it. The only thing I could see is the fact that Chloe executes singing and dancing with such perfection and precision. It is definitely a testament of a great performance. I loved it. I thought the costumage was amazing. I thought the dance moves she did were alluring and provocative. And if you listen to the lyrics of the song, Nina Simone is not a gospel singer. This is not a church song. The song is called Feeling Good. It's called Feeling Good. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, I'm feeling good. Just because y'all have made that song some type of jazz standard, it does not mean that there was something wrong with her performing that choreography or choreography, excuse me, to that song. And people love to make things, you know, make things seem like it was so inappropriate. I am not doing that with y'all. I think she did amazing. I was captivated. The costumes, the facial expressions, the singing, the ability to roll around on the floor and, and throw her ass up in the air and then catch it and slide it down real smooth. You know, there was there was no mistake. -age. You know what I'm saying? Like Chloe is impeccable. Chloe is impeccable. And to me, there, there it seems to be a group of people online that just absolutely love to hate on Chloe. And I don't understand why. Like, I'm sorry, y'all. I don't have a picture because I, you know, I was looking at it from my Instagram and I didn't want to uh, share it. You know, just in case there was an issue, because y'all know you put up a little clip of somebody dancing and, you know, you got a copyright situation you can't get it off even if you edit the shit out i ain't got time for that today okay y'all know what chloe looked like and if y'all want to see that performance y'all can easily find it online she also put up a, a different performance i think she performed that song on good morning america abc i think and it was her just standing there singing it was no choreography it was just her standing there singing and it was vocally the same uh, um you know the same performance but visually it was not and I feel like she gave y'all, this is something for everybody, something who enjoy my, something for people who enjoy my dance and something for people who just enjoy the singing. But she gave you everything in both performances. Thank you, Quasha, for the super chat. People use Nina Simone way of singing the song as an excuse to why they didn't like Chloe's performance when I'm sure half of the people criticizing it has never listened to Nina's music. If they had, they, they wouldn't feel this way. I'm like, Nina Simone was very much someone who went against the grain who was, you know, in control of herself as a woman, you know what I'm saying, in a way that made people uncomfortable. And I feel like Chloe is definitely someone who is in control of their sexuality, figuring it out, uh, uh, using it to their, you know, um, benefit. She is a performer. <laughs> like, that's what people do, you know what I'm saying? 
Um, so I just kind of feel like I'm tired of the we hate Chloe group. I don't know who these people are, but they find a way to complain about everything that girl does. Thank you so much, Miss Keisha, for becoming a YouTube member. I appreciate you, love. Okay, yes, what she did was art. And I would like for black black people, period, but black women specifically to stop browbeating each other because we no longer uh, subscribe to the bullshit ideals that have been put on us for years, that have been put on us for millennia. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, maybe not millennia. Um, well, yeah, hundreds of years, <laughs> hundreds of years. Okay. Anything that we did was considered over sexualized. You know what I'm saying? And it makes it okay for people to assault you. That's all it does. Okay. Her performance was amazing. And a lot of the times people don't, and is it, <laughs> people don't understand sometimes how hard it is to execute certain moves because all they see in the move is the sexuality in the move without realizing that the actual execution of it is showcasing my dancing and my ability, okay? It's not showing that I know how to fuck. It's showing that I know how to dance. And y'all confuse those two things because dancing is something innate to black people and also something that we did to work through emotional issues. Like, that's why I don't like when people try to tell women how to move their bodies and, and how they should be dancing and what type of dancing is appropriate and what type of dancing isn't appropriate. I don't like that. You don't get to police how I move my body. If you don't want to see what I'm doing, then don't look. You have that choice. OK, but I thought her performance was beautiful and I'm, I'm tired of the we hate Chloe group of people that just will not stop fucking with her no matter what. OK, just always got a problem about something. Anyway, you guys, I am getting a low bar here. So I just want to check in with you guys. I'd like for you guys to just go ahead and let me know if y'all can see and hear me clearly. And I will move on to the next topic. Okay, this is innate. I know that, right? She she is. She is so unproblematic. And people still find a way to fuck with her. I don't appreciate it. Oh, wait, hold up. Is this right? Wait, hold up. Wait, no, I see it. Come on, bitch. Come on, bitch. You won't fly, huh? You won't fly, huh, mosquito? I know it's probably a mosquito with a net. Because in the summertime, it would be wet outside and the nets just be around. But I got to spray for you bitches. Okay? Come close to me again. They always want to disappear on you when you pull out the spray can. Ain't that some shit? Anyway, y'all. Y'all good? We good? All right, let's go move on to the next topic. Y'all, let's talk about Kevin Hart. Let's go ahead and get little Kevin out the way. So y'all hate Lil Kevin. Y'all do. A lot of y'all hate Lil Kevin. I don't. Okay. I am very forgiving of Lil Kevin. I do not know why. <laughs> okay. Um, I know he's an asshole. I, I know that he is a self-important little man that has made a career for himself and a lot of times allows that to get to his head. But it was Father's Day and he had a new movie on Netflix coming out hood which I did watch and I thought it was really good I thought he did an amazing job I thought when he cried I cried him and Alfre Woodard pulled on my heartstrings that entire damn movie and the little girl that they got to play Kevin's daughter in the movie was amazing I also appreciated all of the melanin you know, Kevin might like in his real life to, you know, follow the rules of successful black men. You know, I impregnate um, a, a round away filet or a, a brown skinned black girl that I grew up with, you know, that held me down. And, you know, they got on. I left her ass for or racially ambiguous girl. OK, because I, I still want my black. Girl. I fuck with them. So I'm going to fuck with somebody that's black, but don't really look that black. She might be half black or something like that. OK, either way. He, you know, he follows the 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 the, the algorithm <laughs> and life. But in this movie, his wife and his love interest later on in the movie were both brown skin black women. It was the girl from them, and it was um the the the, the lady from uh I don't know why I'm forgetting her name from um she's got to have it. I don't know why I'm forgetting this lady name because I've seen this lady in so many things. I love this girl. Okay. I love both of them, but the one from she's got to have it. I just been with her for a longer amount of time. You know what I'm saying? But the movie was really good. If y'all haven't had a chance to check out fatherhood on Netflix, go ahead and check it out because it really is a good movie. It really is. Um, basically I'm not going to give the one, the Wanda wise. Thank y'all so much. I didn't want to like give y'all any spoilers, but basically Kevin, um, 
loses his wife during childbirth and has to raise their daughter on his own and what that is like for him. And it is definitely sad and heartbreaking, but there are beautiful, funny moments. And the fact that his, he's able to be funny, even in the sad moments sometimes, I think he did an amazing job. Everything that Will said about him on Red Table Talk about this movie was exactly how I felt. So let's go ahead and get into the Red Table Talk. So he was on Red Table Talk and I actually made a few notes just uh, to, you know, just give y'all a little roundabout. OK, so Kevin was late for the interview. OK, he was basically like an hour and a half late for the interview. Uh, Will and Jada stood outside and basically clowned him the entire time. Like they put him on a timer and everything. And Will was like, this is some disrespectful shit. OK, he was like, I'm important, too, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got shit to do, too, bro. And you late. And we changed the schedule and got up early and did everything we did to accommodate you. And you still end up being an hour and a half late. So that will just go to show the fact that Kevin really is an asshole. Kevin really does have a hard time trying to balance the life of being a father, being a famous working actor and comedian, you know, really at the top of his game at this point, because he does get paid the big bucks and he does get a lot of opportunities from the Netflix specials, you know, to the actual movies, all of those things, okay? But the public, John Q. Public does not like Kevin. I mean, it's just, it, it, Kevin comes off like an entitled little asshole that loves to disrespect and cheat on the women in his life. <laughs> like, So yeah, a lot of people don't like Kevin. You know what I'm saying? He said some things about the LGBT community. Personally, I feel like those old ass tweets, I don't know why people always get upset about things that were the norm during the time. I do understand that we need to correct things, but once somebody has apologized and moved on and they don't continue to speak that way, I, you know, especially publicly, I, I don't know what else we expect for folks to do. But the, the, the let's go pull up tweets from 10 years ago. Shit needs to fucking stop. It's almost like, oh, it's a slow news day. Let's go look through somebody who we already know is probably problematic. Let's go look through their tweets from 10 years ago and see if we can find something that'll be a good story today. Yeah. I'm tired of y'all with that. But yes, when Kevin did show up, he showed up banging his music loud as shit in an old school. So he showed up with such great energy that they were forced to kind of get over that moment, even though they probably were a little bit agitated with him. But when they sat down, you know, they moved on from there. Jada wasn't a part of the interview. And Kevin was like, I want it to be good, though, Jada. What you mean you're not going to be a part? <laughs> but for real, though, he did not want to do that interview with the ladies of Red Table Talk because it's harder for a man to lie and bullshit and feel uh, validated in doing so when he's sitting in front of women. It, it's so much harder to do that because we can feel that they're on bullshit and the bullshit that they're giving us, when, we, when they realize it's not working, that gets upsetting for them. Men talk bullshit to one another. It's, it's like, oh yeah, man, I know you on bullshit, but it's all right. I'm on that same bullshit. We on bullshit together and it's all right. You know what I'm saying? That's what, that's basically the mindset that men have when they can have conversations with men that they can't have with women. And in all honesty, I feel like, you know, sometimes it leaves space for y'all to validate toxicity instead of taking responsibility for the way you act. Telling yourself that only women recognize it is really annoying. You know what I'm saying? Only women will uh, uh, call me to the carpet for this. Like it, it means that a lot of the times men get to get away with the things that they say and do just off the sheer fact that nobody checks them about it. It's exhausting. It's exhausting when you think about the overall like energy of that. But anyway, because that, that, that persists all over the place. I'm sure there are many women and men in my comments right now in the chat right now that can think of moments where men have kind of been allowed to just like get off on some bullshit just because they're a man and, and, you know, other men around them, you know, pat them on the back and told them or their mamas had told them that he was a good man, Savannah girl. He can cheat, lie, backstab, disrespect the fuck out. You'll be disingenuous about his emotions. He can do all this emotional abuse to you. But girl, he's a good man because he shows up in the world as one because he can count and has a good job. And, you know, he isn't a bum, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's very exhausting. And that's basically what Kevin and Will were talking about. The ability for them as famous, rich black men 
to get away with all of their bullshit in their business lives. But when it came to being a father to girl children, that's where it stopped. That's where it stopped. Even their women can only do so much, but their girl children have definitely made it harder for them to continue in this world, ignoring feelings and emotions. And Will is able to, you know, vocalize things so clearly and so well. And when you find out that a lot of the times the reason why Will is able to tell you something that really makes so much sense, some aha moment he's had is because of Willow or Jada. Willow, nine times out of 10, because sometimes I think he, you know, he just don't even be listening to Jada no more. But Willow says it. And because that's his little girl, he has to come down to where she is. Because little girls don't understand lack of emotion in the way that sons do. And I think this is the issue that my dad had. It was very hard for him to understand that you can teach somebody that their feelings don't always matter. But at the same time, there is a level of self-care that has to happen. And there's a level of caring about feelings that has to happen because in real life, Feelings are the only thing that matter, especially to the people around you, to your children, to your your loved ones. Feelings are the only thing that really matter, especially when it's kids, because kids don't recognize that you pay bills for them. Your wife may recognize that, you know, you pay all the bills and you've made it possible, blah, 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 blah. But your kids they don't give a fuck about that. They don't care about that. They don't understand that you just paid a three hundred dollar energy bill. They don't give a fuck about that. Daddy, I just want to la 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 to you, and and you're you know not in the mood to la 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 with me, and you you know you come at me on some rah rah shit because of whatever you're going through. You know what I'm saying? I went through that a lot as a child, and I feel like it's nice to see Will and Kevin have this conversation because I think it's so important for men to understand that they, especially black men, have been trained that feelings don't matter, but you cannot parent in that way. Because in real life, my feelings matter. In my household, my feelings matter. With my husband, with my, with, you know, eventually if I have children, all of those things, my feelings matter. Okay. It may not matter in a business realm, but in, in this household, it does. So fathers have to learn that the lesson is not always to ignore your feelings. But to listen to them sometimes as well, you know what I'm saying? It has to be a balance. And that's why a lot of people promote two parent households, because a lot of the times men will provide a certain amount of responsibility while women will provide a certain amount of self care and self analyzation. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like it doesn't always have to be man and woman, but it just has to be a person or two people that are able to recognize that when you are raising children, you need to care about their feelings, but you also need to show them that the world doesn't care about their feelings. So they need to move in a way where they are able to get their feelings under control. They're able to check themselves. You know what I'm saying? They're able to, you know, put their feelings on the back burner when need be and then tap back into their feelings when they absolutely have to. Y'all, I think there's a caterpillar on my floor definitely a caterpillar okay y'all give me a second i'm gonna go get this outside y'all like the video okay
Oh, right. Yes, I did. I did get it out without killing it. Okay. <laughs> Bitch, I was sitting up here and I'm looking. I'm like, is that thing? What is that? Is that what is that move? Child, listen. <laughs> Got it out though. All right, back to Kevin Hart and his interview. Okay. So the conversation was just basically: I'm a CEO, I'm a businessman. I tell people what to do in my everyday life. My feelings don't matter. How I feel doesn't matter. I'm tired, but I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to meet this requirement. So the idea that we continue to like be harsh with our children about how they take care of themselves. I actually started this documentary last night by, uh, what is Chantrell's last name? I forgot her last name, but she's actually from New Orleans and it was about self-care. Y'all told me to watch it. My mother's garden, I think that's what it's called. And it really is about, the innate witchy shit that black women do and the things that we uh we we know innately and we don't recognize it and then also talking to women who have a lineage of being taught self-care and how to use the earth and use metals and and you know just use what god has given us as a way to deal with our issues and who we are in life okay and it was really good i, I was falling asleep so i had to stop the video is skipping a bit. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, in our mother's garden. Yes, this is the uh the documentary. It was really good. I didn't finish it. I need to finish it. But it was a lot of that same conversation about how we were so used to surviving that we forget that we also have to flourish. And flourishing, you need to provide care. You need to provide nutrition. You need to provide watering, pouring into. OK, and so much of black people's lives, men, women included, you know what I'm saying, is you do what you have to do and your feelings don't matter. But that's where self-care comes into play. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was like mentioning that uh, documentary, because you have to self-care. And in men, not only do you have to self-care, but you have to care about the feelings of the people in your life if you expect them to care about you. Because you're teaching them to be emotionless. You know what I'm saying? You you may think you're teaching you may think you're teaching them to be responsible, but you're teaching them not how to handle their emotions. Okay? Just like I've been seeing a video going around of the 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 mom who her son was having this moment where he's spazzing out and so she tells him to blow. Remember, we do the exercise, you blow on me and I blow on you. Who? And he's crying, he's upset, but the blowing the blowing helps him relieve the stress. It's breathing exercises, really. But it's a way for him to control his emotions. So when he gets upset, he knows how to handle it so he doesn't continue to spaz. When that little boy becomes an adult, he will now have a toolbox on how to deal with uncomfortable emotions. And he won't act out and get himself in trouble, hurt himself or anybody else because he couldn't handle his emotions. There are so many adults that don't know how to handle their emotions. And it is because we've either been taught uh, to care too heavily about those emotions or to not care about them at all, to ignore them. You know what I'm saying? So the conversation was definitely deep and y'all should check it out because it was a good interview. I think Kevin is always trying to endear people to him. And for all this day, he really attempted to do that with the, you know, the Will Smith Red Table Talk as well as with the movie. I think the fact that he's able to have a number one movie after y'all just finished telling that man that he is garbage <laughs> says everything. And, and I think I, I learned a lesson in it within myself. As long as you continue to do your best at your craft and, and continue to grow in the ways that you are able to, fuck what everybody else got going on. Fuck what everybody else has to say. But the people around you, the people that you're actually close to, those are the people you actually affect. And the words that you say matter. Meaning you can't get your ass on stage, Kevin, and talk about your ex-wife disrespectfully and you don't think that people are then going to take that attitude towards her. That was another conversation he had. Kevin's daughter, his 16-year-old daughter, has to check him all the time. Kevin is constantly having to check Kevin and let him know what he's doing is not just a joke. You are a famous person that people align themselves with. So whenever you say something negative, where is a joke or not about a woman in your life, a person in your life, you are giving the public free reign to have that same response to them as if they know them.
And that's why you have to be careful about what you say. And I think a lot of us were turned off by the way he would joke and handle Tori, especially knowing everything that Tori went through and sacrificed for him to be who he is. Oh, I love you too. Thank you so much, Otani Brown, for the super chat. Thank you so much for the super chat, CA. Um, you are amazing for real. Appreciate your commentary. Thank you. I appreciate that. But yes, y'all, a lot of conversations going on at once. I know, but I feel like it tied in. <laughs> But either way, the Kevin situation, very entertaining, just put a lot of things on my mind as far as how we do parent and how we really do need to get better. You know what I'm saying? Just get better with how we handle our emotions and how we teach our children to handle their emotions. Because I think so often parents think they can completely lose their shit on their kids and then their kids are supposed to stay calm. So it's like you want your kids to show you more restraint than you're showing them. And that doesn't work because you're the one whose brain is actually fully formed, not the kid. You know what I'm saying? Um, Saki said, what did you, Saki, what did you say? You said you unfollowed him on Instagram got tired of him constantly ragging on heaven. She's maturing and she needs his support. Everything is not a freaking joke. Little bitty half of a man. Yes. I know everybody was so upset when he said uh, that she was on whole shit because she was dating several different dudes. Yeah, I know everybody was upset. I actually thought it was funny. I'm smart enough not to um, take that for what it actually is, but there are assholes out there who will. So he definitely needs to do better. And I feel like he's constantly in a state of putting his foot in his mouth. OK. Constantly. OK. But um, it's so funny because when I did watch the comedy show, I laughed at that shit. I thought it was funny, but I also don't really think his daughter's a hoe. <laughs> I, I don't think that's what he really meant. You know what I'm saying? And I think people love to take things and then run with them and then go to this, you know, 16 year old girl's Instagram page and tell her how her dad said she was a hoe. And it's like, Russ, really? But that really goes back to people being miserable in their lives. And if y'all would raise y'all children appropriately, maybe they wouldn't get online and exact revenge on people all the fucking time. <laughs> Tell your kids you love them every now and again. God damn it. OK, because all of these trolls really remind me of people whose parents didn't, you know, really fuck with them like that. That's unfortunate. Stop having kids if you don't really like kids. So, y'all, let's move on. We talked about that for long enough. Keely Williams, y'all. I missed this last week and I wanted to talk about it. Y'all, let me put up this little screenshot from uh from Encore. Y'all know I review that, right? So Keely Williams of you know her her get a little tired of your book, your promise, promise, and that your better thing and the number the number call you when you tell you and get with the fella, the fella, hanging with me. Oh, we can tell us and tell us. I was with it with you, did it had no tell us, no tell us. Hanging at the crib, you live with your mama and your mama. All right, I'm gonna stop. So, the shade room is saying, Hold up, let me slide to the top, slide to the top. <laughs> so, your last to get down now. Okay, Keely is the one that's up here in the middle, just so y'all know. Keely is right here, you know, in case you don't know what she looks like, but I'm assuming that all 689 of y'all know who that is, okay. But Kelly did an interview and apparently it was going down in the basement in the 2000s with Kelly and members of various groups while they were on tour. But as she said, Kelly touched on a few topics, including the formation of 3LW in her love life while she was in the group. When asked about who people would be surprised to know she dated while she was in 3LW, Kelly dropped a few names that are definitely on the list of millennial heartthrobs. Keely prefaced her statement by saying she technically didn't date anyone, but she did have a few entanglements in that era with some of our R&B faves. That does not mean she gave up the puss, but something makes me feel like you probably gave up the puss just a little bit. Um, but yeah, she says when I was in 3LW for like a hot second, I had an entanglement with Mario. OK, I was like, yes. Oh, baby, you got what I need. But you say he's just a friend. You say I'm just a friend. Just want to be your fantasy. But they say I'm just a, say I'm just a friend. Oh, 
baby can you give me one reason why i'm gonna want this kind of guy because i stay dipped i stay laced and you know i know i'm fly girl stop playing games with me and let's get this on tonight you got nothing to lose let me do what i do baby you got i need got what i need yeah listen i get y'all that breakdown right quick okay y'all that breakdown right quick y'all that's the best part of the song is the breakdown but that's what keely say she was messing with i'm not mad at that i'm not mad at that at all okay the whole seemed a bit perplexed after she said that she also was in entanglements with all of the members of b2k Bitch, all of the members of Beats Okay. So you mean to tell me, uh, you did it with Raz? Like, mm. Kylie explained that she was never on tour with the fellas, but there were some promotional events in which they see each other. You get bored after the show. She said, you know, you run out of dancers very quickly. We didn't know Kylie was such a player from the Himalayas. Um, yeah. Let me tell y'all something. Kylie just now got this, uh... Keely child, Kylie, Keely, whatever her name is. Keely just got this weight on her. Keely just got this weight on her. Keely didn't have that weight on her before. Keely was skinty and light skinned, okay? Light skinned and skinny back in her early uh, 2000s, girl. Yes, you was fucking with everybody because everybody wanted to fuck with you. Yes, absolutely. I believe it. I want to know. I want to know what happened. What were the specifics? Okay, was it Raz B? Bitch, did you fuck Omarion? Did you do Omarion and Raz B? Please tell me. Was it Fizzle Pop? We all loved Fizzle Pop back then. Everybody wanted Fizzle Pop back then. Okay, DJ D Rec was disgusted. You know what's so funny? I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh, look, they gave DJ D Rec a job outside of Wild In. Okay, that's all I was thinking about when I saw him. She was part of two big girl groups. Right. No, I remember. She was a cheetah. She was a cheetah girl. She was a cheetah girl. Okay. Light skin, skinny, cheetah girl. Making money out here. Training. Yes. Okay. Listen. <laughs> it was not a train. It was not a train. Y'all gonna stop doing that to the young girls. Listen, if it was J-Bug and Omarion, we would like to get the deep. If it was Raz being Fizzle Pop, we would like to get the deets, but we're not going to be as happy about it. That's how I feel. Let's go ahead and move on from there. Let's talk about Megan Thee Stallion, okay? Because that's the last topic. I don't know what else was going on in these streets, <laughs> but I didn't care. So let's go ahead and talk about Meg and the baby and everything that went down on social media this weekend. Because it was a lot. And I know y'all want my opinion on it. So here we go. The baby has stepped in it yet again. I'm reading from Vulture, y'all. Sheru Senha. Okay. So the baby has stepped in it again. Days after the release of Scat, his new collaboration with Tory Lanez, the baby retweeted a fan's joke about Lanez shooting Meg the Stallion last summer. I guess the baby and Tory Lanez cool now because they shot somebody and don't have to do no jail time. The fan's tweet reads, the baby quickly claimed that, I'm sorry, the tweet read, okay? The baby quickly claimed that the retweet was a mistake, tweeting, I don't know what type of um, Lord, Illuminati shit Twitter going, got going on. I ain't retweet nothing but ball if I want to. Promo. Megan then addressed the situation on Twitter. Though she didn't name the baby directly, she said, support me in private and publicly. Uh, I'm sorry. Support me in private and publicly do something different. These industry men are very strange. She wrote this situation ain't no damn beef. I really wish people would stop uh, stop downplaying it like it's some Internet shit for likes and retweets, meaning stop comparing the beef between Cardi and Nicki Minaj to a domestic dispute between a man and a woman who he was having sex with that he shot. That is not the same situation. There are levels to this shit. But please stop comparing it like it's the same because it's not. The act of violence to which you pulled a gun on a woman and whether you discharge that weapon on purpose or by mistake, you shot a lady you was fucking. That is not the same thing as two girls who don't like each other getting into it. It's not the same thing. Okay? 
So people, please stop doing that because I see y'all making that correlation a lot. And I feel like that is not the same. But how, however, I want to say, I feel like I probably wouldn't speak on these things publicly. I understand Meg feeling a way about the baby. She could have just unfollowed him and had nothing else to say about the situation. I feel like we want to tell her not to speak because often when people do acknowledge situations, it makes it even worse. But I imagine from her standpoint, people are coming at her about it anyway. So she feels like I might as well just get the shit off my chest and speak my piece. OK, but the baby was at first laughing and denying retweeting the shit. And y'all, I have accidentally retweeted shit before, but he retweeted that shit and I guess it didn't allow him to unretweet it. <laughs> so it was just like the baby, but you still was doing, you know, promo working, promoting in a way that you said you would not like you were still moving funny style as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to continue on with reading, though. Instead of simply apologizing, the baby doubled down telling Megan not to let these folks get the best of you. To me, that was some disrespect. That was some disrespect. He also added, stand on what you stand on without feeling like I'm against you. No, nigga, you said that you were going to be on my side. And that's not what I feel like is happening right now. Don't try to turn it around on me like I'm being weak minded and letting people get in my head when the truth of the matter is you said you will handle something in a certain way. And now you are moving with opposition to that. OK, anyway, he says my stance hasn't changed at all. Yours has. We already spoke about this in private. I'm sorry. He didn't say that. Meg said that. Meg replied, my stance hasn't changed at all. Yours has. We already spoke about this in private. And you specifically said that ain't even no good business move. Why would I promote that shit? But now this ain't your beef. That ain't real. But you stay on your business, my G. You know what I'm saying? She let him know. And I appreciated what she said. At the end of the day, this is not a beef. That nigga shot me. You and me was making money together. It was more so in your best interest to align yourself with me at the beginning. But now it's been muddied up all this time that went by and people are allowed to put whatever narrative they want on it. And Tori is still in some ways popping. Now you want to change your stance and act like she's overreacting. I hate when niggas do stuff like that. You move in funny style. And then when somebody say something about it now, they're over emotional. But if the shoe was on the other foot, you would have said something and people would have felt like, oh, he's just being real. It wouldn't have been seen as, you know, overly emotional the way he was trying to make it seem. Talking about you going to let them get the best of you. Nigga, all them teeth in your mouth getting the best of you. Anyway, the baby responded by downplaying his mistake and reiterating that the whole thing was none of his business. Meanwhile, Megan's boyfriend, Partisan Fontaine, joined in to defend Meg, telling the baby, you don't ever got to address her again and calling out his backpedaling. This matter ain't about no public opinion or Internet beef. Fontaine added in a later tweet after the baby laughed him off. Yeah, I know you laughed him off. <laughs> I know you laughed him off. OK. Listen. Party said, you niggas is corny. A lot of you women is corny. Any nigga that shoots a woman is pussy. Any nigga that sides with it, condones it, affiliates they self with, stands beside that type of behavior is a bitch. Any woman that supports it for any reason is a fucking sad, bitter, or confused bitch. He ain't say that, but I'm sure that's what he meant. Megan hasn't responded to the baby's latest tweets because I'm sure she's been told to now disregard him and not to continue to give it no energy. Um, also, I saw that, you know, her former best friend Kelsey had to, you know, comment and say, oh, this loyalty, it burns. You know, she had to say something. It burns. Kelsey, we didn't ask you for that. You could have kept that to yourself. Um, I'm not surprised. These niggas move funny style. That's what they do. I wouldn't ex I wouldn't have expected the baby to be loyal to me. But that's how, you know, people be gassing people head up behind the scenes, behind the scenes. You loyal, you ten toes down, all that shit. And then when you move funny and I say something about it, now I'm, I'm the one that's doing the most. No, partisan did not speak one lie. I like him. I don't know if their relationship will last because, you know, celebrity relationships be five minutes. But I will say I appreciate him coming to her defense because I feel like so often she's been left out there by herself as if in any way, shape or form, she could be the wrong party for getting shot. <laughs> like, and y'all, 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 I feel like so many people are waiting for a scenario that makes Meg the bad guy. And I don't know how that can actually come about considering she was the only person that got shot. 
It'd be different if somebody else got shot. She was the only person that got shot. And it's crazy to me how people will still try to rationalize in their heads, making it seem as if there is some outcome that is going to make her seem like a bad person and exonerate him. Where is that at? I'm waiting to find out. Because I don't think that's what it is. I really do think he did not mean to shoot at her. I think he pulled out the gun on some rah-rah shit to scare her because she was saying something he didn't want to hear, talking to her in a talking to him in a disrespectful manner, and little niggas get upset. So what they do, they pull out a gun. And they doing all that rah-rah shit, and it accidentally goes off and it, and it gets her in the feet. Doesn't mean he meant to shoot her, but it doesn't change the circumstances. I really do feel like it was an accident. I don't think he did it on purpose, but that doesn't change what he did. Bondi literally mentioned Nikki. And the whole point is Megan was a hypocrite in the collaboration issue with Cardi and now. No, that is not the point, sweetheart. The, the point in which you don't understand is that a beef between two people is not the same thing as somebody shooting someone. It's, it's different. An argument, a misunderstanding is something we can get past. A man shooting a woman is not something that most people would be ready to forgive or move past. I don't know if I want to support a man that thinks it's okay to pull out a gun on a woman and shoot her because she said something he did not like. That is period point blank. And what I want you to understand is I will never fault. I will never fault Meg for doing business with Cardi because Cardi did not shoot Nicki Minaj. Okay. She did not shoot her. Okay. They got into it. They did. And we're not even going to go down that rabbit hole, rabbit hole, but I feel like y'all try to make that correlation because y'all are Nicki stands. And y'all want to be so mad because this girl who just got into the music business did not align herself with someone who has beef with so many other people. Nikki has beef with so many other people. Megan would have pigeonholed herself if she wouldn't have still been out. And first of all, why would I not make music with the girls that's popping with me right now? That doesn't even make any sense. That would not have been smart business wise because they came out with the number one song in the country. If she would have not done that, that would have been bad on her part. I'm sorry. Do you think that the baby in, in Tory Lane's song is going to be number one? Let me know. Let me know. But I still feel like shooting somebody in industry beef based on bullshit that's incited by people that think y'all beefing is good for business. That is not the same thing as this man shooting her. And y'all are not about to make me think that it is the same. You can feel like Meg is flawed all you want to. That does not mean she deserved to get shot by Tory Lanez. The baby could have simply stayed the fuck out of it and said that, listen, I'm not going to not work with somebody for whatever reason. I'm just not going to do that. He could have not lied, but you can't tell somebody you're going to run a certain way. And then when it turns out to be a lie, you can't be checked. Fuck out of here. Business is business. You are absolutely right. You are absolutely right. But don't lie to somebody and tell them that you're not going to work with someone. And then you turn around and do the shit. That's all. It could have been real simple. The baby could have never even spoke on the shit. He could have never made a choice in private. He could have not done that in private. Or he could have been like, listen, I don't want to get involved. He could have said that the whole time. And then she would have been wrong. But that's not what happened. He got up there and said that he wasn't going to promote the shit. And then he accidentally liking posts of, of, about shooting her. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Meg has every right to feel how she feels. She has every right not to work with whoever she don't want to work with. The baby has every right to work with Tori if he wants to, but the point still remains you lied to that girl and she felt the way, period. Period. If you can prove to me that Megan told Nicki Minaj she would never work with Cardi B, then we would have a different conversation and I still would feel like it's not exactly the same thing. But nobody, nobody has a, a relationship like that. Nikki is an OG and everybody wanted a song with Nikki. But the truth of the matter is Meg's song with Cardi did better than Meg's song with Nikki. Her not working with Cardi would have been a bad decision. I don't know if I feel the same way about the baby and Tori.
the baby became all fake. Thank you, Abu Bari. People kill me with these false moral equivalences. Shooting someone is far worse than a petty rat beef. In my opinion, in my opinion, I also think it's different because they're more so on the same, you know, on the same level. You know what I mean? Meg used Nikki. And <laughs> like, was she not supposed to take advantage of that opportunity to work with Nikki? Get the fuck out of here. Like, I could want to work with Nikki and respect her as an artist and still feel like I don't fuck with you enough for you to be telling me who to work with just because you got beef with that girl for whatever reason. That don't mean I'm not going to work with her. But if the motherfucker shot you, <laughs> that's a different situation. And that's just my opinion. And that's what we here for. I, I I agree. I agree that she needs to learn how to, you know, not feel the need to get online and, you know, talk about it. And, and oh, it's a betrayal. And yeah, fuck that nigga. Now you see, I wouldn't say nothing. Me personally, I wouldn't say nothing. But y'all, Meg is still 20 something years old. Meg is still a 20 something that, that grew up during this social media time. You know what I'm saying? And I think she's quieter than she really should be sometimes. But I wouldn't have gotten up there and responded to the baby. I just would have clocked how he was moving in and would have just been like, well, I know I can't really trust him. And that's fine because that's how the industry is. But that doesn't make it any less tiring, aggravating or fucked up on his part is what I'm saying. And he tried to laugh it off like it was cool. And it's not. It's just really not. And I don't I'm sorry, but Tory Lanez has never taken responsibility for what happened. He's never been clear about what happened either because he knows that the truth sounds bad. No matter how he says it, <laughs> the truth sounds bad. No matter how he says it, okay. But you know that's just my opinion, y'all. Meg is very young, and I think that she don't have a lot of people that she trusts. And I think she trusted him, and that's unfortunate. And it's a lesson that she's gonna have to learn. But I think we all go through times where we trust the wrong people, or we feel like people owed us better than what they what they gave us we expected people to be better to us because of how we were to them you know i think we can all say that we've expected more from people and people have fallen short because it happens to everybody but i think that everyday people have a lot to say because they don't understand what it's like to have millions of people coming at you about shit. you know what i'm saying so I'm always going to be a little bit more forgiving when I think about this situation because I feel like it's fucked up as it is. And when you think about Meg as a whole, Meg then lost everybody in her family. Meg is popping at a young age, trying to do a lot. And this happens, you know, and now you got people thinking that you, you know, uh, the type of bitch that would lie and say she got shot by a nigga when she really <laughs> didn't like that's crazy. It's a lot going on. It's a lot of uh, pressure, no matter what anybody says. She has every right to feel some type of way, especially when her and the baby was supposed to do a mixtape together. Coronavirus put a pause on that. Wendy Noir, thank you so much for the super chat. And I agree. So now when they don't do the mixtape that some people wanted, you know, or that he may have wanted, don't be mad at her because now she's, you know, OK, I didn't have to say anything, but I can work with who I want to work with. Well, now I don't want to work with you since you feel like it's OK to work with that nigga. I don't want to work with you no more. Boom, bow, pow. We done. OK, shout out to Jay Lee, who now has me making gun sound effects for no damn reason in the video. All right. But y'all, it's, it's raining and thundering and my dogs probably want to come inside. So I'm going to go. We've had the conversation. We've talked about it. I've given you my opinion. I'm sure there are so many of y'all that are going to be upset about my opinion. I'm sure. Um, but either way, uh, y'all know I'm a grown ass. Well, I'm a grown ass woman, y'all. <laughs> I'm, I'm a grown ass woman now y'all so I don't stand for anybody but I don't I, I don't like bullshit I don't like bullshit and sorry and the baby feel like they be on bullshit in this situation just me but anyway y'all I love y'all I hope y'all have a good rest of y'all day okay I have a busy day tomorrow so my videos are probably gonna be later in the day just so y'all are aware I'm uh yeah cause I got one and then so yeah videos tomorrow on tuesday are probably going to be like six seven o'clock in the the evening just so y'all know all right love y'all hope y'all enjoyed i enjoyed y'all talking to me and i would like to thank saki for being a moderator today and you know everybody that comes to every video i love y'all i appreciate y'all and i will 
see y'all in the next one. I got you, Devin. <laughs>